Hey there, if you are a wedding photographer, chances are you spend a lot of time culling your images. It can literally suck all the life and efficiency out of your workflow. I'm gonna share with you how I've figured out an efficient, fast, simple way to cull images and to cull them quickly. So the way that I do this is through a program and through some tips within this program. The program's called Photo Mechanic. I use Photo Mechanic Plus. I've used this for years, maybe even a decade. I'm not sure, I'd have to look back, but it's $139 and it's easily one of the best investments of my entire career. And I'm gonna break down why. So just to make sure we're on the same page, if you're brand new, you may be thinking, what in the world is culling? Culling is when you take a huge chunk of images and you need to get the best of the best out of there. So you're literally going through and sorting out the images that you're going to keep. That's my definition of culling. Right, so I will go and I will shoot a wedding and I will shoot anywhere from four to 6,000 images. And I know I'm gonna get comments about this. That's embarrassing, I'm an overshooter. And you're right, if I actually became less of an overshooter, it would save me a lot of time in culling. So that's my own problem that I'll work on. But I come back from a wedding, thousands of images, I'll take four to 6,000 images and I'll call it down to 1,500. You could call in Lightroom. You could call through Bridge. There, There's other options. There's um, artificial intelligence options for culling that we'll get into. To probably some episode down the road. Um, the reason I love Photo Mechanic is because it was created for this and it is so incredibly fast. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna dive into Photo Mechanic. I'm gonna show you my exact process. I'm also, I just wanna say, there's other programs that do this. I've only used this. I keep upgrading when they have new updates and I love it. There's no reason for me to look elsewhere. So let's dive into my computer. I'm gonna show you the ins and outs of what I do, how I use it, so that you can give it a try for yourself. All right, before we dive in, let me just explain that Photo Mechanic is not something where your images are being brought into and you're gonna to have to export them out. This is, this is not quite the same as Lightroom. All I'm doing in Photo Mechanic is I am viewing my folders. So I'm viewing them and I'm sorting them them more quickly, more efficiently, more easily. Every time I make a move and drag images, they are actually being dragged from the hard drive where they're living um, in that folder to a different folder. Um, so just don't get into the trap of thinking like, oh, I'm importing everything in. No, you're not importing everything in. You're just viewing it through Photo Mechanic. All right, so what you see on my screen is just a basic finder window. And this is the wedding that we have duplicated to use for this YouTube example. And so when you see here, this is Tim and Megan's wedding. Um, it was a fall wedding we did a while back. And so we have two folders here. So here you see Tim and Megan unedited. This is a folder full of all of the raw files. We uploaded all the cards to this folder. These are all the images from the wedding day. They're not sorted. It's just one big folder full of everything that I shot and everything that Michael shot. So then you see Tim and Megan wedding five starred. Five starred is just the term I have used since the beginning of time. I used to do this in um, Lightroom back in the day, like in 2008, and my college roommates would sit with me and watch me five star for hours <laughs> in my college dorm room because um, they wanted to see the wedding. And so that's how much free time they had. <laughs> and so I would just call, I would just click through and I would label them five stars and that's just a name that has stuck since college. You name it, whatever you want. If it wants to be, Tim, if you want it to be Tim and Megan wedding keepers, best of the best, whatever. But Tim and Megan Five Star, this is the folder where all the raw files that are the best of the best are going to go. Okay, so inside of Tim and Megan's folder here, you're gonna see subfolders, and this is breaking down different parts of the day. And I actually have expanded this. Back in the day, I used to do something simple like portraits, ceremony, reception, details, that was it. But I have found that the more subfolders that I can create, the more simpler my process is. Now, you can do this however you want. But for me, the reason why I love this is because once I have the whole wedding called through Photo Mechanic, which I'm about to show you, then I can import all of these subfolders into Lightroom and I can process through a wedding in a much less overwhelming way. So I have maybe 60 bridal detail photos and I have maybe 150 pre-ceremony photos and I could edit those really quickly before dinner. But if you just have a chunk of images and it's like 600 photos in one folder, that's something that people procrastinate and avoid for like weeks and weeks and weeks. And all of a sudden the wedding is like two and a half months past and you haven't even attempted to edit that folder because it's so daunting. So I also think it's important because these are, the, these are the same folders I export to with the final edited images and these are the folders that go into my client gallery and this is the way that my clients sort through their images. So it allows them to be able to find things quickly, easily, and efficiently. It also allows me to feel more organized. So what I do is I have a subfolder 
um, folder on my desktop where I have these folders pre-made. So every time I shoot a wedding, I just grab these empty folders that are already named the right names and I copy and paste them into a new Tim and Megan wedding five-star folder so they are ready. So when I go into Photo Mechanic and I start calling, once the call is done, I can drag the right images into the right folder and that's when I know I'm ready to go into Lightroom. And the, and the editing process begins there. So I do this all in Finder, get it all set up. Now it's time to jump into Photo Mechanic. Okay, so what you can see now is this is Photo Mechanic, and I'm gonna go right over here to this bar. This is my hard drive here. I'm gonna open it up, find the YouTube folder that we created just for this special video. Um, and we're, you'll, you'll notice this is exactly what you just saw in Finder. So we have a five-star folder, we have an unedited folder. So if you, if you double click on Tim and Megan unedited, all of a sudden you see all the raw files of the day. If you double click on Tim and Megan five star, you see nothing because why? These are all the subfolders and there's nothing in there yet. So I am just viewing the folder structure that I just showed you in Finder. I'm just viewing that simply within um, Photo Mechanic. Notice there's no need, I'm about to start calling, there's no need to ingest into Photo Mechanic. If you wanna use Photo Mechanic as um, uh, in, a way to import just your files from your card to your hard drive, that's fine. You could also just go to Finder and drag them off, whatever you prefer. But I think the biggest thing you could take away from this is that Photo Mechanic is just allowing me to sort and view my photos efficiently. All right, so here we're looking at a um, large folder of a lot of images. And what I'm gonna do, um, I like to see them by capture time. Um, so it allows me to see images as they were shot throughout the day. And it allows me, if I always know that I'm calling by capture time, um, then I know that if I stop and leave off where I'm calling, maybe to go get lunch or come back another day to finish, um, I know that I can, if I view it that way, I can clearly see where my cold image are and I can pick up where I left off. Um, if you go back and forth from like file name to capture time to, you can start to think, did I call through that section? There just weren't any good ones or has that? So I just always go by capture time. Now, here's a tip that I have told people literally for a decade. When you're shooting, when I'm shooting, most of the time I'm shooting like an initial test shot, like a group of people. And then I'm like fine tuning, like actually, can y'all come a little bit perfect? And I'm taking another test shot. And then I'm like, okay, this is great. I'm gonna get my framing perfect, make sure everyone's looking. And then we start shooting for real. So that means I've taken a handful of shots just getting ready for the real deal. That means that the best images that I'm more than likely gonna keep every time that I'm shooting are closer to the end of a, a set of photos than the beginning. And so it means that if I'm calling from beginning to end, I may see one of those test shots and yeah, the, the group isn't super tight and united, but it was a fine photo. I might select that, but then realize, click, 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 10 shots later, oh, that actually was a better photo. Now I gotta go back and get rid of that first one. A lot of people don't do that. And then all of a sudden you have too many images that are cold. So my pattern that I've realized over the years is that my best images come later in a set of shooting. So I need to actually be calling backwards. I need to start at the reception and need to go backwards. There's another reason why I love this. It's because I don't like calling receptions. Who likes calling receptions, right? It's the same people dancing over and over and over again. No one loves that. So start with what is not inspiring because that's when you still, I have some motivation. I'm gonna get this wedding done. No one wakes up in the morning and says, I can't wait to call reception photos. Maybe you do if receptions are like your jam, but that they're not mine. So I wanna get to the glowy sunset portraits. That's my thing. I wanna get to those. And I know that if I get through reception, toast and entrances, I get to get to my, my glowy light. It's like a motivation factor for me. But not only is it a motivation factor, it's also strategic because I'm selecting the best of the best way more likely when I'm going backwards than when I'm going forwards. Um, so let me just show you an example. I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom here, all the way to the exit. I am starting at the end and I'm going backwards. I, am, I have one hand, there's so many things to tell you. I have one hand, on the one, which is gonna label them red. I used to label them teal, I, that's my color, um, but, but I don't label them teal right now just because I updated Photo Mechanic and I never reset my number one on my keyboard to be teal and I've just realized, you know, I got a lot of, a lot of kids and stuff and it's not a priority anymore. So um, I hit number one and <laughs> it labels them red. I have another finger on the back arrow on my keyboard. And so what I'm doing is I am just literally clicking the back arrow and then whenever I see an image I wanna keep, I'm hitting number one and it's labeling it red and that's a keeper. So the, what I love about this is, watch how fast I can do this. So um, 
Now this one, is that one in focus? I'm gonna zoom in, not really, so we're gonna keep going. Was that in focus? Yes, it was. Right. When I'm zooming in, I'm just clicking, my thumb is actually on Z. So my hand's like this. I got this finger going on the back um, arrow. This is hitting zoom for Z, if I need to zoom in. And this is labeling if I'm gonna keep it. So my hands literally just stay like this the entire time. Um, and so I'm going back and forth through some of these. That's gonna keep, um, oh, I like that one, a little dark. That's cute. And maybe we'll keep one of these. Oh no, that was cute. And people praying and I'm just scrolling through. I don't like that one, hold on. That's a good hug, mom and dad hug. Whoops. <laughs> Us and the couple, random tip. We always get a picture with the couple at the end of the day. It's one of my favorite shots. Now we're gonna enter the reception, all right? So people are dancing. All right, singing. So in real life, I would just keep calling through all the way back, all the way up to bridal details at the beginning of the day. But let's let's jump to another part of the day. Like for example, um, scrolling up here to, wow, well, there's a lot of reception photos here. Um, let's do bride and groom. Like these are some of the sunset portraits. All right, so we have some veil flying. That's in focus. There's Tyler um, fluffing the veil because Michael was occupied photographing <laughs> the cocktail hour. Um, and she's looking, that looks great. Oh, now that's a more genuine laugh. So this is where we started. This is kind of goes back to my point, the best come a little bit later. So she's laughing more genuinely. That looks more natural than the ones we started with here. So I'm glad I didn't start because I would have selected this one first when that's not the best. So you want to be, you want to be precise and you want to only select the images you actually wanna to pay to have edited. So I have an editor that will get this Lightroom catalog and she's gonna edit everything I give her. So if I accidentally have um, a shot with eyes closed, I really shouldn't pay 39 cents to have that edited because I'm not gonna keep it. And I don't want it to accidentally end up in my client's gallery. So I am being precise, but you'll notice, and part of this is because I am an overshooter. I have so many options that if I just see a great one, I'm just gonna click it and move on because I know like, Great, that's perfect. If you're not an overshooter, you could probably stand to call a little more slowly because you don't have as many to go through and you can be more precise with your decisions. But for me, you know, I'm, these two are pretty similar. I'm clicking this one because I think there's less glare on his glasses. Um, but I'm trying to make sure I'm precise enough to make wise decisions financially because I have an editor. Um, but I'm also being not as picky because I wanna make sure I get through these. And if you hyper analyze everything, um, you're never gonna get anything done. So I'm just clicking through. There's a few, I like that one. I like them walking there, a little kiss. Perfect, now we're into family formals. All right, so we have that shot of the family, that shot of the family. Perfect, mom. Oh, eyes are closed, there we go. Horizontal option, brother, there we go. So I've done a few sections of the day. So this is what I'm gonna show you now. Normally I would go all the way through. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to close this window, which is just the viewing window, and now we're back to where we were. You can see the images that I tagged with red as a red label, and you can go up to this panel and just click no color class, and all you're gonna see are the, are the images that have been flagged and labeled as five star images. So the next step is going to here and saying, all right, so this is all going to go into the reception folder and I'm gonna drag right here and it's sorting them and it's gonna drag them over. All of these images, oops, don't need to, hold on. All of these images are going in the bride and groom folder here. I'm gonna sort that. So now those are moved. All of these images are keepers. They're gonna go in the family formal folder. And I would do that for every single folder for all the images. And then all of a sudden, I have a cold, organized and sorted collection of photos ready to be imported into Lightroom. And I just select, when I import into Lightroom, I'm just selecting the five star folder, including subfolders. And I'm taking all those subfolders into Lightroom and I'm ready to edit. It is so easy to find what I need to find. It's easy to see a section of the day that's a little bit heavier on the calling. Like sometimes I will pull images in. It's like 500 bride and groom portraits. Oh my gosh. Um, and sometimes I will go back to that folder in Photo Mechanic and I'll make sure I get rid of some extra duplicates because no one needs 500 portraits of themselves from their wedding day. But once I get them into these folders though, that is the end of the calling process and I can move on to the next 
step. And I don't really need Photo Mechanic again, um, unless I just need to sort through and I miss something later on. But really, this is where the Photo Mechanic journey ends for a workflow for me. And now I'd be moving this folder into Lightroom. Here we are in Finder after the culling process and we go to Family Formals. You're gonna see the photos that were moved. Um, and the reception ones, I did not do reception details, so there's nothing there, no cocktail hour, but I did do a few bride and grooms, so you see those there as well. So for me, this system has worked so well because I actually end up keeping all the folders in the five start folder way after the wedding is done. And so from an education perspective or just finding an image to do a big edit that someone might ask for, it is so easy for me to find them. They're, they're already sorted, they're in the right folder. So once the wedding is officially done, I'll show you the original folder. This is the actual folder for this wedding we have an editing we have an edited folder that is just a um and it, it's an exact replica of the five-star folder those subfolders so this is family formals but these are the edited ones all right so these are the final edits so I so what I do is once I am done with the full wedding it's everything's edited it's exported into these subfolders I just take all of these subfolders and I just upload all 11 of them to CloudSpot that's my gallery company that we love um and it's automatically in subfolders and they're ready to go. So if you are a family photographer, a senior photographer, you're like, well, this doesn't apply to me. Well, it does, it's just a different process. So you'll see here I, in my finder folder, the same hard drive has a family portrait session on it. So we have unedited, we have five star, and we have edited. And so in the five star folder, it's just the raws from that shoot because there's no reason to have subfolders from that one family shoot. And so you can use this system, you just don't, you skip the subfolder part unless you really need it. So if you enjoyed this, there's actually another calling video. It's our 24 hour workflow. That's another episode on our YouTube channel. You can go back in the archives and find that, but it's great. It goes more in depth on how we turn around a wedding um, and get my favorites edited, my images to the editor um, within 24 hours of shooting the wedding and why that has changed my life, revolutionized my workflow, and it's given me the ability to be a mother and a friend and a person that actually is not stuck at their computer all the time. If you struggle in general with like workflow consistency, consistency, consistency in editing, consistency in workflow, I've created a large scale course. It's our second most popular course. The lighting and location course is by far everyone's favorite, but the second most popular course is the KJ consistency course. It is actually the, um, it is the original KJ course. It was the first one we ever created. We redid it um, back during the pandemic. So there's a new version out. So KJ Consistency Course 2.0 is an amazing resource for someone that wants to master, fully master Lightroom and also master a workflow that where you'll get your life back. So if you wanna learn more about that, there's a link below. Check out the other video on our channel about culling and the 24 hour workflow. I will see you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.